welcome to another episode of Curtain Call Conversations. I'm here today with the absolute ray of sunshine that is Elliot Broadfoot. He's currently in the ensemble cast of I Should Be So Lucky, the Stock Aitken Waterman musical, which is doing brilliantly. And if you haven't seen it, please go and see it because it is incredible. Welcome to Curtain Call, Elliot. How are you? Oh, thank you, Emma. I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Yes, I'm all right, thank you. Um, as I say, I mean, I have seen the show. I couldn't wait. When it was announced, I thought I've got to go for the first venue and I tra travelled to Manchester because I thought I've got to see it. And I just think it's brilliant. Now, it's doing so well. Um, how are you finding it? Oh, it is such a joy. And thank you so much for all your support because it, it means the world to us. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's... Uh, possible to not enjoy the show yeah because it's just it's just built on fun um and in a time where things aren't great for everyone i think it's brilliant that there's a piece of theater far in the uk that just gives people two hours to yeah. escape and yeah. have a laugh and reminisce on music that like defines a generation in the country yeah, I mean, it is my musical upbringing. So, you know, when that was announced, I was like, I know all the songs. I'm going to love it. I just know it. And of course, Debbie Isaac, who, you know, is the writer of the show, you know, mm -hmm. what a legend she is. Um, and I have spoken to her before on, on the channel. And she's just so wonderful because she's able to write stuff that you kind of, re you, you can relate to, can't you? It's sort of everyday sort of stuff. And I just think the songs work so well as mm -hmm. well in, into the story. So for people that haven't perhaps seen the show, let us know what it's about. What's the story? So I Should Be So Lucky centres around a young couple called Ella and Nathan. Um, and on their wedding day, Nathan had some jitters and he jilted Ella at the altar. Uh, what uh, follows is Ella's family and friends take her on her honeymoon to Turkey. Um, and when they're there, everyone kind of finds their own path through love. Nathan realises he's made a big mistake and tries to win Ella back, but she uh, meets a rather dashing hotel worker when she's <laughs> in Turkey. And uh, I think from then on, chaos completely ensues. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it is so wonderful and uplifting and just joyous. And I think the audience just... I mean, we all love a jukebox musical, which, you know, it falls into that genre. So, I mm -hmm. mean, what the audience reactions have been so brilliant to this show. I mean, what's the what's the atmosphere like in the theatre for you guys? Uh, it's, I find it hard to, uh, to describe sometimes because it's like, it really is quite magical. Yeah. Um, there's been a few moments in this job where at the end of the show, the confetti's falling and everyone's on their feet having a dance. And it's a bit mad because <laughs> I, I don't think there's many shows out there that really invite the audience to be a big part of it yeah and that i think is at the core of of this show is that it was made for people to come and be a part of mm. um as opposed to just kind of watch yeah and enjoy yeah, yeah. I mean, there, you know, there is a lot of talk about audience participation at musicals mm -hmm. and stuff. But I think, you know, if the cast are, you know, up for it and, you know, that's the nature of the beast. I think sometimes, you know, I, I mean, I don't agree with it wholly. You know, it depends on the situation and on the vibe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But this one is such a big party atmosphere. I think it's hard not to sort of shift in your seat at least. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think the music lends to people having a good time, yeah. 100%. But our audiences have been so respectful to the moment the show are, yeah. you know, uh, delicate or there's really important storytelling going on. And then at the end, they're invited wholeheartedly to get yeah. involved. Yeah. Um, and I think because we, there's no kind of richness to the, the rest of the show where they're, to not enjoy themselves and not have a bit of a boogie in their feet when they're given the opportunity they can just jump straight at it yeah and people do yeah. I mean it's just so infectious mm -hmm. isn't it it's just one of those <laughs> yeah. one of those fantastic shows I mean we also feature Kylie I mean actual Kylie um perhaps not mm -hmm. in person but you know for the people that have seen it they will know <laughs> and there was a when you were in rehearsal she actually came in to your rehearsal and surprised you all I mean what was that like uh, it was insane. <laughs> it was really mad. Yeah. Um, she is so lovely and said such lovely words. 
we'd only been in rehearsals, I think, like four days. Wow. Um, and we, we, you know, we'd have to get quite a lot together so that she could see where her part kind of fit into the story. Yeah. Um, but she was incredibly complimentary of what Debbie and everyone had created, and yeah. so so lovely to us. But it, I think, still now, even when I look back in the pictures of her running in, <laughs> it's still not real that we spent like an entire day with Kylie Minogue. Yeah, I mean, I think I would just would have collapsed to the floor because, for, you know, if somebody <laughs> of my age, she was like everything to, you know, her mm-hmm. and Jason, of course, they were, they came as a pair to, to somebody like yeah. me. I, they got them on my wall, you know, I don't know what I'd have done. I mean, you all handled it. Oh. Quite, well, I'm going to say calmly, but you didn't. Most of you screamed, but, you know. Why uh, yes, I was a screamer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. I mean, you're also um, you're also cover to the role of Michael, aren't you? Which is played mm-hmm. by Scott Page. So, what's it like getting that message that you're going on today? I mean, you've got to you know totally change your what's in your head to do a different track. Yeah. Or like? I mean, I was quite lucky um, because Scott was doing Panto yeah. on Christmas um, in Crawley. I got a, a chance to play the role for like three venues. Brilliant. So it's kind of in my bones now. Yeah. But still, once you haven't done it for a while, yeah. and you get that text message, <laughs> it is. Yeah, there's a lot of gear shifting. It's the backstage traffic I think that I find the hardest to remember. Right. Because my ensemble track's quite busy. Yeah. And there's moments in my track where there's like a nice dip. Right. And sometimes I'll hear something and think I've missed. <laughs> I've seen or I'm late for something because yeah. I'm sitting in my, my ensemble chat. Yeah. So it's a bit of a, a juggling game, but I I think the part that Scott and Debbie have created is brilliant. Yeah. And I have so much fun uh, getting to step into his shoes, you know, once in a blue moon. I'm on at the moment because Scott's not very well. Oh, um, really? Oh. Yeah. And it's such a shame. Um, but I, I just, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a real joy yeah. to do. Yeah. yeah. I think my sort of word that I took away from it when I saw it um, in Manchester when you opened is just camp. I mean, it's just yes. camp as Christmas. It's mm-hmm. just brilliant. I mean, there's just nothing yeah. not to like about this show. And I just think yeah. it's just so uplifting. And, you know, people, I just can't understand if anybody went and they didn't enjoy it. I mean, it's just it's so neither. lovely, isn't it? It's just... <laughs> You know, yeah. it's a little bit silly, I suppose, as well. But that's mm-hmm. what we all need. You know, we don't yeah. need to go and see something that's just so intense all the time. We need, yeah. we need love, and we need to be uplifted. I think so. Yeah, I mean, you There's must be having. Be a balance. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you must be having a ball. Obviously, I follow you on social media, and you're always doing videos with the rest of the cast, which I think is so lovely. So you must all just get on so well. Yeah, we've got such a great bond. I mean, it's quite a big cast. There's yeah, twenty five of us. Yeah. It's quite rare, you know, post COVID to have such a large yeah. cast. Yeah. Um, but everyone is just joyous. But and I think it it's a testament to Debbie and in, in the people she chooses to work with. Because mm. so many of the cast are, you know, like ex nativity or yeah. they did a uh, great film Christmas on the Little Farm. Yeah. And I think she manages to find these people who are just lovely. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's the best way to describe it. It's it's a cast of really lovely people. And I think because the show is so fun, we can't help but kind of have Have fun fun with each other without being too draining because this job isn't easy. Yeah. Um, But we still manage to find those pockets of time where we can hang out and live a relatively normal social life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it translates onto the stage as well, which is, you know, it makes it even more joyous um, as mm. well. So let's talk about you and your career, Elliot. So where, I mean, what did the performance start for you? Where did it, where's the love come from? Um, I mean, I say this a lot, but my mum jokes that I came out of the womb doing jazz hands <laughs> because I can't really remember a time when I didn't want to perform. Yeah. Um, it kind of feels like, there isn't anything else in the world that I'm meant to do. Mm. So I'm very grateful that it is get it's what I get to do. Yeah. Um, but I I danced growing up. Um, I grew up on uh, quite a poor estate, so there wasn't lots of opportunities. But my mum took me across the county and across the city to any classes. Wow. Uh, I wanted to go to. She sacrificed a lot to make sure 
yeah. I got the opportunity. And so I'm, I'm very grateful for my mum for doing that. Um, and then when I finished high school, I auditioned for a couple of drama schools. Um, and at the time, there weren't many degree courses. Um, there was a lot of diplomas and yeah. you can't get student finance for them. And so I was like, oh, I'm not going to drama school. Took a couple of years out. Um, I had my own little cabaret show in a bar in Leeds for a bit. And then I got invited to work overseas. And, and I did two summers working in Spain. And while I was there, I was like, this is great. But I know I'm meant to be yeah. in the theatre. Yeah. So I came back home and Leeds College of Music had just announced that they were opening a school of performance. Oh, OK. So I thought, oh, it's, it's home. And I'm from up north. So I was like, it'll be nice to kind of be close to home in a city that's familiar. In a place where they're trying to move this kind of London-centric. Yeah, yeah. Um, vibe, you know. Uh, so I went and trained there for three years. And then I graduated last summer. Yeah. Very exciting. Oh wow. Um, yeah. So the, I'm like not even a year out yet. Um, I've been, you know, incredibly lucky to do some of the jobs, um, that I've done. My uh, professional debut was at a brand new theatre in Epsom, um, with uh, Simon Hardwick's production of. And it was done, which ah uh, yeah, the, the the lavender farm, um, the, the lavender field, yeah, 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 yeah. So that was that was really strange performing outdoors every night in a very <laughs> rainy summer. <laughs> oh god, um, yeah. But again, it was a cast of of people who were like thrown together, and we just fit. I'm yeah. just lucky that from the shows I've worked on, everyone's fit really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's it's joyous, isn't it, just to be able to have that mm-hmm. sort of family feel when you're going to work because you know essentially yeah. it is a job you are working but it's nice to be mm-hmm. working with people that you get along with and yes. so let's talk about the audition process for you I mean as you say you're newly sort of graduated so you've perhaps not done as many auditions as some of your colleagues there at I should be so lucky but what was the audition process for this particular show like for you um it was it was quite an intense uh, and quick one okay I, uh, I got asked to submit a self tape um, and so I sent that off and then maybe didn't hear anything for two weeks Yeah. and then I got invited down for an in-person audition where they wanted to hear the, the single material again and yeah. we'd have an improvisation workshop with Debbie uh-huh. um, which was like scary for me because I'm such a huge fan of her work Yeah, and she's very um, famous for improvising in everything yes. yeah. and I think she gets the best yeah. work out of her actors sometimes when she asks them to do that Yeah. Um, so I went down to London on the coach because it's expensive to travel from the top <laughs> on the train. <laughs> it is. Um, had this great dance workshop with Jason Gilkerson, our choreographer. Yeah. Um, and then for the first time ever, did my song material whilst also doing the kind of uh, act. So it was a very interesting kind of process of not just getting someone to hear me sing and then someone to hear me do side. Yeah. Kind of what usually happens, but to integrate them from the off yeah. was a bit of a wild ride. And then, as I was on my way home that same day on the coach at Leeds, minutes from leaving London, my agent rang and was like, "We want to see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m." Oh, so wow. I jumped off the coach, <laughs> oh, rang yeah. my mum, and I was like, "I'm stuck in London. <laughs> I've got no decisions to I'm a student. I have no money." Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, stayed the night, had the audition the next day, and. Um, which quite a few of the cast were in. So that oh, was really nice. nice. Yeah. So I met a few of them before we knew we'd got the job together. And then the following Monday, I, I got the offer through. So it was a, a really quick turnaround and a very yeah. intense kind of 48 hours of, of auditioning. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, yeah. obviously, you're you're a very young Elliot. So, I mean, did you know of the music of Stock Cake and a Waterman? I did. I, I, I went to school late. So I'm, I just turned 27. And so early naughty Kylie, um, right. I was very aware of, and I think from that knew of yeah. other other song songs. Um, but the one I didn't know of, which is now my firm favourite, is the Hazel Dean classic. Um, which with the name has just left my head. <laughs> I was trying. I was going to try and say it to you then, but it's gone out of my head as well. Whenever I'm not like ready for work, <laughs> the show just doesn't exist. <laughs> 
whatever I do, wherever I go. That's what it's yes, called. Yes, that's the one. I believe I forgot the yes. name of a show, of a show I'm in. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's my new favourite. Yeah, I mean, they wrote some absolute bangers which are still you know to this day still brilliant I mean they could be mm-hmm. back in the charts I mean well we all know yeah. Rick Astley's just you know storming it again and every mm-hmm. I think if anybody doesn't know the Rick Astley classic then yes. there's something the matter with them quite frankly yeah. um so um lucky for me you're in Birmingham next week which I'm delighted about I'm coming to see the show again because I just can't get enough of it um so you'll be there between the first and the sixth of April um, next week so I'm coming in on Monday and I really oh, can't wait yeah I really can't wait to see it all over again um, because I think if people haven't booked to see it it's only on till what is it May the end of May May the 11th middle, middle of May yeah. so if they've not seen it please go and see it so sell it to them sell it to them why should they come and see the show um, I think if you want a good night out with your family and friends where you can sit back and see bits of your life reflected back on you with some great music and this is the perfect show to come and see that's perfect lovely all right then elliot thank you so much for spending some time with me today i appreciate it have a great easter as well you too happy easter take care